everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be telling you how you can become a doctor in the UK. You may also want to check out my video on how to become a GP in the UK and you can click on the link above. So as always, if you found the video useful, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, then why not consider subscribing and turn the bell on so you know when I'm gonna release my next video. Have a look around my channel. I'm sure you'll find something that'll be of interest to you. This video is for international medical graduates. For the purpose of this video, when I talk about an IMG or international medical graduate, I'm talking about someone who would have qualified outside of the UK or the European Economic Area or EEA. So I just want to start off by saying that I'm not an international medical graduate, um, although I have worked with many um, over the years. I have done a lot of research around this topic to provide you with the most up-to-date information. So most of the information I'm going to talk you through today can be found on the GMC website and I will provide you with the links below. So I thought it would be good to start off with a summary which can be found on the GMC website. And the summary is really about how international medical graduates or IMGs can demonstrate their knowledge and skills and there are four main ways in which you can do this. So the first one is you can sit and obviously you have to pass the PLAB exam and PLAB stands for, if you don't know already, Professional and Linguistic Assessments Board exam and there are two parts of this exam, the first one being a written and the second one being a practical exam. The second way is by participating in a sponsorship scheme. The third way is by having a postgraduate qualification that is acceptable to the GMC. And the final way is to gain entry onto one of the specialist or GP registers. And that is through the Certificate of Eligibility for Specialist Registration or the CESR or Certificate of Eligibility for General Practice or the CEGPR. Now, if you are an applicant through this process, you will gain entry straight onto one of those two registers. So in order to become a doctor in the UK, you have to obviously apply. Now, first things first, you need to check that you're eligible to apply. You will need to complete an application and pay a fee. You'll need to provide the necessary evidence and attend for an identity check. It's important to note here that every application is different. And so the requirements will differ between those who are applying. Now there's something called the registration application finder on the GMC website, which I have linked to below. And that's so you can find out which application you're eligible for. In this video, I'm going to talk about some things in more detail than others. And I thought it would be good to provide you with a checklist. Again, this can all be found on the GMC website so that you can keep track of exactly what you need to do and what you need to provide to the GMC. So the first thing is that you need to be competent in speaking English. You need to have and demonstrate uh, English language skills of a reasonable level. And so why is this important? Well, this is important because you need to be able to communicate effectively with your patients and to be safe and not put any patients at risk. You'll also need to provide evidence of your fitness to practice and the ways you can do this are as follows. So all your postgraduate medical experience and non-medical experience and certain other activities within the last five years or since you graduated. So the GMC could ask for references from a previous employer where you perhaps did non-medical work and also they could ask for a certificate of good standing from uh, medical work experience. And that could be from each medical regulatory authority that you've been registered or licensed with. So one of the key things that you must do before you even start thinking about applying is making sure that your primary medical qualification or your medical degree is acceptable to the GMC. And you can find a list on the GMC website um, to decide if your um, qualification is acceptable. And if you're not sure, you can contact the GMC. It's also important that you consider any breaks in your uh, medical practice because it's really important that your skills are up to date. Now, things that are specific to you as an IMG, international medical graduate, are the PLAB test or PLAB exam and an acceptable internship, an acceptable postgraduate qualification, gaining sponsorship by an approved sponsor, and ensuring that you are eligible to enter onto one of the two registers as above. 
Okay, so let's talk about uh, the GMC. So the GMC or General Medical Council is the regulatory body. Now there are a number of different factors that are relevant to obtaining uh, GMC registration or becoming registered with the GMC. So the first one is nationality. Now if you're not a UK or EEA national, then you will need to ensure that you have the necessary visa and immigration documents. As we've discussed before, you will need to make sure that you have an acceptable primary medical qualification, where you achieved your medical degree or primary medical qualification, the type of work that you want to do and whether you've completed an internship or a period of postgraduate training. So let's talk about eligibility for INGs. This means that you will live in a country that's outside of the UK or European Economic Area or Switzerland. You would have passed PLAB 1 and 2 and that's within the past two years and you will need a GMC account for this and you would have completed an internship after you graduate ideally you would need three months in medicine and three months in surgery but a total of at least 12 months so 12 to 18 months I'm now going to spend some time talking about the foundation program so in order for me to talk about the different types of registration it's important for me to brief you and tell you a little bit about the foundation program here in the UK. When you complete medical school here in the UK, you have to then go on to um, work as a foundation doctor. So you have to apply to the foundation program, which is comprised of two years. And you'll start off as an FY1 or foundation year one, and then you'll go on to becoming a foundation year two or FY2. When you graduate and you become a doctor, you will have a provisional registration, and this enables you to carry out work as an FY1. And then providing everything is fine and you complete all your assessments, then you'll become a foundation year two and have full registration with the GMC. So now I'm going to talk about the different types of registration. So you have provisional and full. Now let's talk about provisional registration. So if you have a provisional registration, that only allows you to work as an FY1 here in the UK. Now who can apply for a provisional registration? So as above, UK medical graduates who've completed their training, their medical degree in the UK. International medical graduates, or IMGs like yourself, who have not completed an internship or less than 12 months of hospital uh, placements, but who have passed the PLAB exam. Nationals from the EEA or Switzerland and other countries with EC rights who qualified outside the EEA and Switzerland or who qualified at EEA or Switzerland medical schools and doctors who have qualified in an EEA member state can apply to do their practical training or internship in the UK if that practical training counts towards medical degree so having full registration means that you can work in any form of uh, professional medical practice but just note to become a consultant or GP you'll have to apply and complete the necessary training programs so you can apply for full registration if you have an internship or hospital placements of more than 12 months and have an acceptable primary medical qualification. So most IMGs will work as a trust grade, which means that they're not in a, a training program or they can apply for an F2 standalone post. And you can also undertake private work as an IMG. There are just a few other things to consider. So number one, for specialty training, you'll need to have a CCT, a Certificate of Completion of Training, or you'll need to have a Certificate Confirming Eligibility for Specialty Registration, or CESR. But I'm just going to talk briefly about the PLAB exam. So you'll need to complete PLAB 1 and PLAB 2. PLAB 1 is a written exam that you can take outside the UK in certain uh, countries. But PLAB 2 is a practical exam that must be taken here in the UK and that's at the GMC headquarters in Manchester. Uh, further information about costs etc can be found on the website and I'll put a link in the description box below for you to have a look at the website. Now these two exams must be passed within two years of your applying. So now I'm going to talk about English language requirements. If your primary medical qualification was in English then you may need a letter from your university stating the following things that all of the course, including all your clinical activities, was taught and examined completely in English, and at least 75% of any uh, course-related clinical activities, including patient contact, was conducted in English. And you'll need the date that you passed your exam, and this all must be within two years. 
Now, if your medical degree does not fulfill that criteria, so it was not primarily taught in English, then you will need to take uh, an English language assessment. However, you can also use the following. It's an employer's confirmation of a job offer, but this must be from a healthcare organisation which must be on the list of designated bodies by the GMC and you can use an English language reference form and there is other forms of evidence that you can submit but you have to check the website out for that and I have left a link in the description box below for you to check out. So let's talk about the English language assessment. So there are two main ones that you can take. One is specific to healthcare settings and the other isn't. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is the International English Language Testing System. This test measures the language proficiency of those who want to study or work in a country where English is the main form of communication, essentially. Now there is a nine band scale with one being absolute beginner and nine being expert and you must achieve a score of 7.5 or more. Now, the occupational English test, like I said earlier, is specifically designed for healthcare professions. Now, in this exam, you'll need to achieve uh, level B, and that's in all the main areas, so that's reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Now, this test includes real situations that you may encounter when you work in a healthcare setting in the UK. Just to finish off, you really must read the GMC's uh, Good Medical Practice. That has a lot of key information that you must be aware of and that you must adhere to as a doctor in the UK. And just a final note on a new assessment. This is called the Medical Licensing Assessment or MLA. So this new assessment will be integrated into the medical degree here in the UK. It will replace the PLAB test for people like yourself, IMGs. I will leave more information below for you to have a read. I hope that's been helpful for you. I hope it can provide you with a starting point on your journey to becoming a doctor here in the UK. Like I said earlier, if you want to become a GP here in the UK, then check out my video, how to become a GP in the UK. And if you found the video useful, then Drop me a comment, I'm always interested to hear your comment and make sure you give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe for more useful content.